Hi, this is Jilly Bling. Thanks for tuning in. As promised, we're continuing with Manly May. And are you looking at the card? Isn't that just stunning? Um, the original person who did this, her name is Carmia. And she did it using the peacock foil paper. And she did it in blueberry. And it was stunning. Unfortunately, I didn't have that. So I thought, well... Let me change it to a different color foil. And looking through the catalog, we have a lot of neutral type colors. And I was thinking maybe red or maybe something else. But nothing we had was current. So I did have one more sheet of this um, peacock designer paper. And this one has the pattern on it. And I thought, well, that's kind of a stretch. But I love it. I really, really love it. I love how it came out. Um, what a great design. I think it would still be beautiful in the, um, the blueberry. Try both. Or whatever color foil paper you have, it, it's going to look great. And then, little golf ball on the inside. I wasn't sure what to do on the inside, but I knew I wanted to try these different dyes. Oh, and check out this golf tee. I purposely picked up um, the pattern in the paper so it looked like this little pattern design right here was holding the golf ball. Kind of like that. Um, there's a die in there for the grass and everything is stamped with just the olive green. So let's get started on making this. Again, using the Clubhouse stamp set and the Clubhouse dies. So Here's many of the things that we're going to use. I'm going to use a Stamparatus mostly just for the word birthday. I could show you where I tried um, to stamp happy birthday and then cut around it and it kept coming up crooked so like I did with the last project. Cut it out plain white and it's easy to get it right in line when I do all of my cards with, I think I could only do six of them without one sheet of paper. So we'll use Old Olive. Look at these. These are um, in the current catalog. They're going to be going away. Do those look like golf balls? Am I just imagining things? Yes, there is a die to make these adorable little golf balls that perfectly are matched. But what about putting these on instead? I don't know if that's too far of a stretch or if I should try it. I might try it on this one that we're going to make. And then you could tell me in comments. Should I use the clear faceted gems or just stick with the golf balls? I really like this one. Okay, so we'll give these a try. So here on my silver paper, of course using washi tape, these are the golf balls dies and it does all three at once. Then I'm going to cut one silver banner and that's used for right here. And I'll cut it right in the middle so that I can have the end showing. And I'll show you about that in a minute. So I'm going to cut these on a big shot. And I'll cut out three of the grass. And that's for right in here. One, two, three. One of them wasn't enough. Two of them, you could see the gap. So I'll cut out three of those. This I'll cut out the golf ball. Just bigger paper. I was doing it on the little ones, but I ran out. This die here cuts out this bit here. And I'm going to do it. See this layer of beautifulness? Isn't it? It's, it's hard to cover it up. Okay, look how much I'm covering up. This is the top paper. All of that. And I know I could take a die and cut something out, but... Instead, I'm going to cut out this. Make sure it's going straight because there's a pattern that needs to be straight. And for the little T, I'm going to find a pattern here and get that centered on there. Okay, good. I'll get the pattern on my T. That's what I was talking about that I captured right there. Okay, and then this piece. I put with the other project that we did last time, the blue card, that's going to go right here. 
because it's all going to be covered up. If this paper was on the inside, I certainly wouldn't do that. Otherwise, when you're writing, you would have bumps. But because it's just layered on top, I think I get away with it. Okay, I'm going to cut them. All kinds of holes in it, but it's okay because it's covered up. Okay, and this is, what other papers do I have? Inside paper, outside paper. This is for the happy birthday. I'm just going to cut out the, um, the banner and then put it into here. Okay, so let's get started. Rather than explaining everything, I'll show you. I learned better by watching. This is Whisper White Thick Cardstock. I really like it. It perfectly matches the regular Whisper White paper, but it's considerably thicker. Um, it feels a little bit um, more coarse. I think this Whisper White is more for stamping and um, the ink lays on top of this paper beautifully. Okay, so this is just going to get attached to the front. In some ways this card is really simple. It's just the layers and that beautiful paper doing all the shining, literally, as it shines in my eyes. Okay, that's good. Now, the top paper, there's no stamping on it, so a little adhesive. Hey, the card's half done. While I'm at it, there is stamping on here, so I'll hold that off to the side, but I will put this on the inside. And, like I said, I had only one sheet of the green um, foil peacock is a pretty peacock designer paper foil um, but this still carries the flavor through to the inside of the card but it doesn't cost as much okay so now for all those little pieces over here I have the banner which we're going to cut in half and it doesn't matter if you cut it straight or not it's fine over here I have the banner with no happy birthday words on it. So let's take care of that. If you have a stamparatus, if you put a um, stamp set over here or a case, a stamp case, it perfectly supports the, um, the plate. And I'll put this right into here. Make sure everything is up in the corner. I had a friend who ordered, ooh, I'd like some mini grid paper. And she thought it was like the big size grid, but just a little bit smaller. She got herself some Stamparatus grid paper. She goes, that's really small. I said, I know, but it perfectly fits your Stamparatus. One side is metric. One side is, what do they call it? I'll remember it in a minute. Didn't that turn out perfect? Um, I'm not going to say American. It's inches, but they have a word for it. It's really close to coming. <laughs> okay, so we're done with that. Okay, so that's going to go on here. Oops, sounds like the boys are home from getting their burger basket. And since I have the ink out, I'm going to stamp... I hope the next year is full of green fairways, blue skies, and short putts. I'm not much of a golfer, so I don't know. I'm sure that means good things. I like it. I like the font, so golfers know. It's kind of hard to see this. Should I put it there? Now you could see it better. Now I could see it better. Just to get it straight. Hopefully. Oh, it's crooked. I'll try one more time. And if not, I'll decide which one is best and I'll use that. I hope my head is in everything. Once again, that's crooked. 
So, because it's crooked, I'm going to trim it really quick. Don't tell anyone. No, no, no one will know. And I'll just make the inside just a little bit smaller. So, there it is all straightened out. So I'll attach that to the inside. Is that all I put in there? Oh, then that thing. We'll do that in a minute. Yeah, that looks nice and crisp, but it, it isn't quite how nice that looks, huh? Okay, so since this is here, let's talk about the birthday words. That, will my adhesive fit on there? Give it a try. Get any extra off. And so now, I want a little bit of the silver showing. Good, make it straight. Okay, and on the other side, the same amount of silver, maybe. Look at that, perfect, perfect. And I'll put that on dimensionals. Otherwise, the, the card, when I look at it, I really like it. When I'm looking at it right now, in all the pieces, it doesn't take very many pieces. It's kind of simple. So, dimensionals, yes please. Three mini dimensionals. Well, let's see, I won't need any more dimensionals, so I'll just put those up there, right where they belong. And I probably should wait to put all this fancy stuff on here but I'm just going to guess and put it about where the other one was. All right. So now let's get to making this part here. I have all kinds of pieces. I'm going to bring them over. Then we can figure out where they go. That's all it takes to make the card. That doesn't look like much, huh? Oh, where's my golf tee? Oh, there it is. Um, so how about if we start with, does this leaf thing have a name? I'm sure it does. Um, I don't think that putting snail on that is going to work, so I'm going to put some glue on it. And if I hold it over, I'm thinking of when I go to place it. I hold it right here. These two little pieces, they're going to be absent of glue. Okay. How about right here? Does that look centered? I think it looks okay. Some of my friends would pull out their ruler and measure, does this amount equal that amount? Or like eyeballing it. Okay, and next goes this piece. That's perfect size for snail. Seemed like it was too tight. You saw how I just pulled those out. Um, 
because if I didn't pull them out, they were that much in. Oh. <laughs> of course, I'm messing with it too much. Hold on here. I should have just left well enough alone. Like, now what are all these little yucky things? But see, when I do whoopses like that, when you do them all amongst yourself at home, you're like, yeah, it happens to everyone. It's like, what is that from? I think that's from my Big Shot plate. My well-loved Big Shot plate. Oh, I hope this doesn't cause a problem. That looks bad. <laughs> okay. Everyone has their hand handy dandy sand eraser, right? Should I start over? Oh my gosh, nice sand it through the paper. That just might need to be where a golf ball goes. Now I think all my glue is drying. <laughs> Making things worse. Well, it covers it up pretty well. You know what? That's where a golf club is going to go. Okay. The original came out considerably better. <laughs> All you could do is laugh, right? Okay, so these golf clubs I cut out using the die, the one that you don't stamp first. Boy, that looks crooked. Just leave it alone. Um, and before I cut them out on the silver paper, I put some, you could use your tear tape, put strips of tear tape, but I put this layer of sticky on here so that when I cut it out, it's all sticky. And the reason I tell you about that is, let me show you something. Well, it's very, in the new catalog, there's going to be stuff to do exactly that. Okay, back on task. So, let's see, which one goes first? I'm not sure that it matters. This one is going to hit right around the corner. And then it's going to go right about a corner. Maybe a little bit further. I'm looking at where it touches here and where it touches there. Next one. Yes, it has sticky on it. It's going to go from this. Uh, ha, ha. Look how that is perfectly covering up all of that yuck mess that I made. Yeah, I planned that. I wasn't freaking out. It does cover that a little bit more than I would like, but <laughs> where, where this card was going before to where it is now, now I'm happy. Okay, so now this one, the handle... It's going to be a little bit lower into this shield thing and cover up the second little leaf. Oh, I want them to cross here. Okay, it's going to go right there. Okay, good. This one still has a sticky on the back of it. There it is. Okay, now it's sticky, which is very convenient. I'm sure glue would have worked just fine. Okay, so it's going to cross in the middle, right there. It's going to drop into the shield a bit. And wherever it ends up down there, yeah. Okay, so next is to put these little golf balls on, but I'm going to try those clear faceted gems instead. Aren't those cute? And it all comes on one die. Okay, so leave comments and tell me. Do you like the ones that are originally intended for the card? Or do you like clear faceted gems? Which size? I think this size. I put them right in the same place so we could easily compare. Do they look like golf balls? I don't know. 
Look, I left the glue dot behind. That one could stay right there. Come on, glue dot. Right over here. Okay. So, what do you think? They are kind of cute, huh? Okay, on to the inside. I'd love to see your comments. I'm going to be watching for them. So for the inside, oh, those little balls, they just might end up on the inside. Okay, so for the golf tee, I hear the boys out there talking on the front porch. That's nice. Okay. Oh. Good. Golf ball. <gasps> I want to go to Epcot. Doesn't that look like the Epcot ball? Oh, I want to go to Florida. Well, no, they're they're having a hard time there right now. Well, I'm happy Disney will be reopening. <laughs> I know this is a golf ball, but to me it looks more like the Epcot ball. Okay, so a whole bunch of little dots, bigger dots in the middle. Therefore, I think it goes like this. Oop. I moved it. Okay, right in the middle. Good. And now the grass I will put down. So you flip it over because my embossing plates are well loved. It has a lot of texture. This way I could just see the dye and a little bit of extra detail. That way there's a lot of embossing plate boldness. So if I do just one of them, it's going to be covered up a lot with the yucky side. And one could go there, and then this one will go on top. So two out of three will have the pretty side um, showing. But I want the grass to be like a tuft of grass that's going in all different directions. And it's fine if you go off of your little border here and go over to the edge and just pretend like you planned that. And that third piece is going to cover up the bottom of the tee. Looking good. And now this one, as I look at this, I'm thinking, what is it going to attach to? It's going to attach to these two sides and then the T. I'll just put it all over. If I let it dry, it will get stuck. Glue. This one, maybe I'll put it a little bit lower, if it's closer. Okay. Okay. So I was about to close it up, but what do I see over here? Mini golf balls. What's the verse say? I hope next year is full of green fairways, blue skies, and short putts. But I want these like they're flying in the air. Where should they be? How about one? I'm just guessing. I don't know. One here. One here, and one here. So at first, when I saw um, Cam Camaria's um, card, I thought that on the front of hers, which was just like this, but in the blueberry, I thought those were the fastest gems. So I was pulling stuff out, and I pulled those out, and then when I pulled the dies out, it's like, oh, the dies come with it. Those are so cute. Um, so they were just sitting here. I think I like it. I don't know. Please give me feedback. I'd love to hear what you think. But I know I do like these in here. 
They're flying through the air. So you hit it. Oop, I'm moving my grass. You hit it, and it's off flying. Oh, there's that little... This here, they could be flying to that. Okay, next card. I'm going to do six of these. Because the designer paper gave me six. What do you think? I'm going to watch for your comments on how to make the other ones regarding faceted gems or golf balls. I like that. Okay, I'm going to let this just be. So, next up, drum roll, is the Tunnel Card by Amy K. Look at that. We'll use the Stamparatus again for this because it's all set up ready to go. Just stamp it in navy. Again, we'll use the Clubhouse twine pack. Ooh. Yeah, I like that one too. Okay, so thank you for tuning in. If you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel and give me a thumbs up if you like it. And I'd love to watch for your comments regarding golf balls. Okay, have a good one. Bye.